Good morning, students. I hope you had a nice weekend and had a chance to get out, maybe do some things a little bit different than Monday to Friday. Uh, Joe and I had a good time. We went walking down by the Potomac River and we saw a lot of people out, but everybody was very careful to keep their distance. But it just reminded me of how lucky we are where we live to have so many beautiful open air areas where we can still go out to get some exercise um, and fresh air while still keeping each other safe with social distancing. Let's go ahead and take a look at our morning message. April 20th, 2020. Dear students, butterflies spread pollen from flower to flower. What is pollen? What is a pollinator? Mrs. Kilmer. Let me reread that again to make sure I understand. Butterflies spread pollen from flower to flower. Butterflies spread pollen from flower to flower. I think I might know a little bit about that. What is pollen? What is a pollinator? Mrs. Kilmer. Well, I'm not going to exactly answer all these questions right now because we're going to find some of the answers in the book that I'm going to read to you today. Last week, you were learning about butterflies and the butterfly life cycle. And I told you that I have some other books that talk about plant and animal life cycles. And I think this book about a bean's life cycle makes a really great connection to our learning last week, as well as keeps us on track with learning about wonderfully interesting science information that's appropriate to spring. That makes a great connection with springtime and how things are blooming and growing right now. Here we go. A bean's life cycle. Oh, and I see on the cover, I see those, uh, this one has three arrows. The butterfly book only had two. This is really reminding me of the recycle symbol with the arrows. Uh, let's take a look at the blurb on the back. I gotta put my glasses on. Oh, I found my old glasses. Actually, Elizabeth found them for me. I have my daughter to thank for that. A bean's life cycle. How does a tiny bean seed become a leafy plant? See a bean plant sprout and grow right before your eyes. Oh, that reminds me of another connection why I wanted to pick this book because I know some of you are sprouting beans at home and also kind of doing your own projects and learning around plants and beans. So I thought that would be good for this. Okay, A Bean Life Cycle. Beans Life Cycle by Mary R. Dunn. Wow, there are some really beautiful zooming up, close up photographs in this book, just like the butterfly book. And this is a Pebble Plus Science book by Capstone Press. Table of contents. Planting seeds is on page four. Sprouting seeds starts on page eight. Flowering plants, page 12. Hanging pods, page 16. Glossary, read more. Internet sites, critical thinking questions, and index. And again, like the butterfly book, they're just using the silhouette. That's like the outline of some bean pods for the illustrations on this page. Oh, I see a header. Planting seeds. It is spring. Broad bean seeds are planted in soil. With water and warm temperatures, the bean seeds begin to change. Oh, wow. I can see the roots growing down, los raíces, and I can see the little sprout, la brota, going up with the little plant starting. Tiny white roots break out of the seed and reach down into the soil. Roots bring nutrients from the soil to the seed. The roots hold the plant in place. So nutrients, nutrients are things that the plant needs to, to live, to be, to be healthy. Like we need nutrients too, right? We eat food and, and drink water and other liquids. That's where we get our nutrients. They get nutrients from the soil. And there's a close up. Sprouting seeds. Soon a bean shoot sprouts. Okay, wait a minute. I just wanna go back and think for a minute. So this is about the sprout when it's actually starting to come up out of the soil. Back here, oh right, back here, this was still the bean in the ground. Yeah, it was, it was busting out a little, busting out some roots, busting out um, not a sprout above the earth though, above the ground. And then this is where it actually starts to grow up out of the ground. 
Soon a bean shoot sprouts. It pops through the soil and becomes the stem. Tiny leaves on the stem start to grow. The leaves begin to open. Okay, so I see the sprout, right? The brota in Espanol. And I can see the stem, the tallo, el tallo. And the leaves are starting, las hojas are starting to grow too. And you can see also the roots are going down and getting stronger and deeper and spreading more through the soil right here. Roots take in water from the soil. The stems carry water to the leaves. Leaves use water, air, and sunlight to make food for the plant. And there are some leaves of other plants coming up through the ground. Flowering plants. Flower buds appear at the bottom of the leaves. These black and white flowers have pollen. They also have a sweet juice called nectar. Oh, here's the first mention of pollen. I wonder if it's going to explain more about pollen. Let's get a close-up look at those flowers. Buzz! Oh, this is a super close-up photograph. A bee lands on a flower to sip nectar. The bee has pollen on it from a different flower. The pollen will make beans grow. So the bee is landing on the flower to drink the sweet juice. That's its nutrients. It's getting its, its food. But look, already on its little legs, on its fuzzy parts, it also have, already has the pollen, which is in this case a kind of yellow powder. Pollen is often yellow or maybe yellow brownish. And that means this pollen is also getting dropped onto the flower that the bee is drinking from. And it's going to take this pollen from this plant and that's going to go to another plant too. So bees end up spreading, spreading pollen from flower to flower. Any flower it goes drinks in. Hanging pods. Bean pods will grow and the flowers begin to die. The pods are lumpy and thick. They protect the seeds inside. So I'm going to stop and think for a minute. So it's saying that the bean pods grow and the flowers begin to die. So from every flower grows a bean pod. So you have to have the flowers before you have the pod. The pods are, are kind of the, the fruit that the plant is bearing. Hmm. Lumpy and thick. Yes, I see those seeds inside. The seeds inside. But I'm thinking of, of, of beans that we eat. So the seeds are like the beans that we eat. You can see that here. Bean plants have about 12 bean pods. Each pod will have three to eight seeds. And you can see a close-up of that. Wait, did I show you a close-up of this? Sorry. And then here, you can see the seeds inside the bean pod. And of course, some kinds of beans, we eat the whole pod because it's tender or soft enough when you cook it that you can eat the whole thing. Or sometimes you don't have to cook them. Like with some kinds of yummy raw snap peas, they're sweet and you can just crunch, crunch, eat them like vegetable sticks kind of. But there are other kinds of beans that they, uh, that we don't eat the whole pod. We don't eat the covering. Look here. Some pods are picked to eat. Other pods dry out and pop open. Their seeds fall out. These seeds may become new plants in spring. So those are the, the dried out beans from here. And of course, we also eat those sometimes, right? When you have like bean soup, that's come from dried beans that were then cooked. Yeah. But also, these are seeds that can grow new bean plants. Isn't that interesting how the seed pod is dried and it's kind of a little fuzzy on the outside? Okay, that's the end. Glossary, bud, nectar. Nectar was a new word for us, a sweet liquid found in many flowers. And that's what the bees like to eat. Oh, do you think only bees like to eat nectar, like to drink nectar? I'm getting a connection to what we've been studying all last week because butterflies like it too, right? And pollen, a powder made by flowers to help them create new seeds. So I know what pollen is. That's the powder on the flowers and what is a pollinator? Well, bees, right? Bees and butterflies are pollinators. 
that fly from flower to flower and spread the pollen out over to different flowers and plants. And that's what makes those plants, makes the flowers start to grow something, start to grow a bean pod in the case of a bean's life cycle. So I'm so keen and interested in springtime and the idea of pollinators and helping pollinators because you know, in the world, some pollinators are having problems. You may have heard about how butterflies, especially monarch butterflies, their population or the, the total number of, of butterflies, of monarch butterflies is going down. And also bees, bees are, uh, bee populations are not doing well everywhere. So I wanted to support pollinators. So I planted a special garden in my yard that's a pollinator garden and it's full of plants that will be especially good for pollinators. And I'm gonna show you a picture. Oops, I've gotta get my light up a little more. I'm gonna show you a picture of the whole garden. And then I'm gonna show you a close up. So here's the whole garden. And you can see there's some, some parts of the garden the plants have not come back yet from last year. In some places they are growing. You can see the green where it's growing. And guess what? In two places, the plants are already blooming. They're already blooming so that there are already bees. And I saw one butterfly coming to my garden already. Let me just go back so I can show you the two plants that have their flowers now are this that's called uh, Alexander, and the yellow flowers are, sorry for the glare there, the yellow flowers have already been blooming and bees and other insects are coming to drink nectar. And there, that is called a wild geranium, wild geranium, and the bees are already coming from that. And if I zoom in on this picture, on this photo of the wild geranium, you can even see, let's see if I can get the no glare, oh, there we go. So you can see the little parts inside the flower that have the pollen on. And in this flower that's not quite open, you can really see those little parts of the flower with the yellow powdery on stuff on them. That's the pollen that the bees are going to fly into and spread from flower to flower. And then, not it's not really growing well yet, but it will soon, it will little by little. I also have, I don't know if you'll remember our book last week, The Milkweed, which is a special kind of plant, especially for monarch butterflies, and I have planted a milkweed plant. Whoops, I've planted a, sorry about that. <laughs> I've planted a milk milkweed plant in my uh, pollinator garden too. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more about pollen and pollinators, and we'll continue to learn more and more about plants and why pollen and pollinators are so important to all of us. And I'll see you this afternoon for our afternoon story. Oh, I have one more point to make it. Someone sent in another R-E word. Relax. Relax right there. Okay. I'll see you this afternoon.